Council meeting to order September the 11th, September 11th, 2024. Start with the approval of the agenda recommendation that the re regular council meeting agenda for September 11th, 2024 be adopted as circulated. Councillor Evans, Councillor McCabe, all in favor? I have a late item to add here. Everyone know about everyone know about the mics. So just again. Back and just I'm just gonna start right here again. Yeah. I'm gonna start back at the approval of agenda. We have a eight item to add camera item. So um I which one? Move in, in camera, slate item. Um, can I get a uh, mover on the amendment? Thank you, Councillor Bushell. Second, Councillor Beach. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. Um, recommendation that the minutes of the regular council me meeting held on August 28, 2024, be adopted. Councillor Evans, Councillor Rich. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, we're going to go into delegations. Shushwap, MLA, Greg. Hello, farewell. Thanks for being here, Greg. You're up. Well, thank you very much uh, for providing me the opportunity to address Mayor and Council. Uh, as we know, in our communities, there are some individuals that uh, go above and beyond and do an amazing amount of work uh, throughout our communities uh, that largely goes unrecognized. Uh, my office is the MLA uh, for the Shuswap region. I was provided an opportunity uh, to submit nominations for a King's Coronation Medal, King Charles III. And uh, it is my distinct honor and privilege to be here uh, to present on behalf of the King, uh, the King's Coronation Medal to an individual who I think many of this community know incredibly well done a lot of amazing work, especially with our youth. That is Bob Evans. That's it. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So on behalf of King Charles III, this is the coronation medal. Uh, by command of the king, the coronation medal is hereby conferred upon you in commemoration of His Majesty May 6, 2023, coronation as King of Canada and in recognition of your valuable contribution to the community. Well, Oh, I have to give it up. Oh, awesome. Uh, little speech. Speech. Yeah. Speech. 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 I I don't really know what to say. <laughs> it's a beautiful town, and we are uh, we're all privileged to serve it. And uh, yeah, I I don't want to say except that I'm grateful to be a part of this community for the last 16 years, and. Uh, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And, uh, you know, our youth um, and the families of this town are, are the most, you know, our youth is the next generation and we should be pouring everything we can into them. So, you know, on behalf of our council, I accept this and I have yeah. people like Jimmy. 
Frappleton, who, uh, who runs youth at the hub now and has taken that over as I got older, but uh, still get to do kids zone on Tuesdays and that kind of stuff just is, is a privilege. Those, those people matter. So thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Congratulations, Bob. That's awesome. Hmm. Okay, we're going to move into bylaws and policy zoning uh, number 1100 2024 adoption. Mm -hmm. Recommendation that's official a community plan bylaw amendment. Yeah, yeah. Some really weird agenda we got going. Bylaw number 1100 2024 mm -hmm. adoption. That's it. Yeah. Nicole, do you want to speak to that? Works. Um, yeah, I guess I could go through a recap of what's done for second and third. And so tonight we're looking for the adoption of 1100, which is, I think that's how you describe it as uh, re adopting our entire zoning bylaw. Copied the old one, 102022, 20, pasted it into a new number. And through this process, we're, we're adopting it by the proper process and um, therefore making it valid. Um, we were going to present it at the last meeting. However, we didn't have Ministry of Transportation approval quite yet. We've got that. And so tonight, looking for adoption of the zoning bylaw. Thanks, Nicole. I'm just going to wing it. There's a recommendation that. Uh, mm -hmm. By the number 1100 2024 be adopted this um, 11th day of September 2024. Could I have get a mover, please? Councilor McCabe, second. Councilor Bushel, any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, moving on. Official community plan bylaw am amendment number. 1076 2024 and zoning bylaw amendment number 1077 2024 1133 Shushwap Ave. There's a recommendation that the District of Sycamore's official community plan amendment bylaw number 1076 2024 be given first and second reading this 11th day of September 2024. Could I get a mover on that? Councillor Bailey, Councillor Beach. <clears throat> Do you want to speak to that? Uh, yep, through the chair. Thank you. Okay, so yes, we have two zoning bylaws proposed here for second. Um, this one was pending adoption of 1100-2024, so thank you for that. Um, and so the, the property we're looking for or at is 1133 Swap Avenue. Right now, it's designated town center under the OCP and in the town center um, designation, it's also under the town center development permit area. Um, and then we, I think, talked about this. Maybe the last meeting was two kilometer buffer area for wildfires, which most of Sycamuse is, is under. And so that's all falls under the OCP. And then it's currently zoned C1, local and town center commercial. So the proposal, um, is the OCP redesignation re and then a rezoning to facilitate a building permit application. So the owner would like to do an expansion of the existing house there and then construct an accessory dwelling unit in the back of the property. So I'm gonna have a feeling June put together these renderings for us and outline to what that would look like. Okay, so why are we doing this? Um, the existing home right now it's zoned commercial and it's obviously not commercial. So it's uh, what we call legal non-conforming. It's not in line with that C1 zone. And so if they wanna do an addition, um, they risk losing that legal non-conformity and the existing, um, or I guess the addition and the accessory dwelling unit, all of it doesn't align with the uh, zoning bylaw. So in order to do the addition, the owner has proposed to amend the OCP and then rezone um, the property just to better align with what they're proposing. So we did take this to the PDC, and at first we took um, kind of a few properties along Shushwap Avenue close to Main Street as a whole, just to talk about what we want those properties to look like. They're all zoned C1 and in town center, but none of them are commercial. 
their um, homes and people have lived there for quite a while. And now they want to start to improving those homes. And so through the PDC, it was kind of decided that there are a few properties along Shushwap Avenue that we would prefer to remain residential. Um, and so this property was one of them. And we have maybe another one coming at a future council meeting. So um, the owners are responding to that discussion. And so when we took it to the PDC for this one, uh, they did recommend that we go through with the OCP amendment and the rezoning. That's all I have. Okay, so um, on the first recommendation, is there any discussion on that? Does council have any comments? All good? Okay, we'll call the question. All in favor? Thanks, that one's carried. Um, the mover and the seconder on that, will your name stand for the second one? Okay, there's a recommendation that the District of Sycamus Zoning Amendment by law number 1077-2024 be given first and second reading this 11th day of September, 2024. And that's Ian and Pam. Um, any conversation or any discussion? Okay, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Staff report, official plan. Hmm. plan. Um, okay, well, amendment 1081-2024-12. Uh, 09 Riverside Avenue. There's a recommendation that District of Sycamus zoning amendment bylaw number 1081 2024 be given first and second reading this 11th day of December 2024. Can I get a mover on that? Councillor Rich, Councillor Evans. Hmm. Okay, through the chair. So we're looking at 1209 Riverside Avenue. It's called the station. Right now it's designated town center. And it's within the town center development permit area, also in the floodplain, wildfire bu buffer area. That's all under the OCP. Um, and more importantly, I would say is that it's zoned C4 currently, Tourist Accommodation Resort. And so um, we've received a request to rezone the property. It is a strata, um, six units, and they want to rezone from C4 to MUR2. And so all of the owners have provided their um, approval of the rezoning by way of DocuSign. Um, and they have let us know that the C4 zoning is restricting potential buyers from gaining insurance for a residence. And so that's why they are asking us to um, rezone the property from the C4 to MUR2, which um, is a, bitter, a better fit. And so a little bit of history. So the property was zoned um, C1A in 101, 1993. So that would have been a couple years ago. And then when 1000 was adopted, that zone no longer existed and they were um, zoned C4. And I know it's tiny font, but just for comparison, C4 on the left and then MUR2 on the right. For C4, uh, the principal use is tourist accommodation. Um, however, uh, sorry, it's such a small font for me. <laughs> the MUR2 um, seasonal accommodation is, is a better fit for them, and it's more along the lines of the intent for each zone. Maybe I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> so for tourist accommodation, the um, intent, it says here, is to support hotels, cabins, semi-permanent tents for glamping. And then in MUR2, it's multifamily residential sites, which may include second homes as seasonal accommodations and short-term rentals, which is what they're doing today. And so that's why we're proposing the MUR2 is probably a better fit. Next slide. Okay, so for the OCP, um, they're located in town center. And so moving from C4 to uh, MUR2, uh, is still in line with the OCP. Mm -hmm. And then as I already mentioned, um, we're just wanting by law 1100, 2024, after a few minutes ago, um, it would conform to the MUR2 zone. And then in terms of any kind of financial implications, it's already classed um, one residential. So sh there should be no financial impacts there. Uh, in the staff report, I just mentioned that because there's no development being proposed, we didn't talk to like a uh, fire or bylaw or operations in detail because there's no change in the land. Um, then next slide. 
it didn't go to the planning and development committee, um, more so because of the timeliness of the transactions that are at play uh, for sales of the units. And so uh, hopefully <laughs> you guys can trust what we're saying here and that um, the C4 to MUR2 is probably the better fit. And that's what we're recommending today with first and second. And I do see yeah, a couple of the owner representatives in the gallery, if you have any questions about the insurance piece or the issues that they're facing with the C4 zone. I'll look to council. Does anyone have any questions or discussion items that they want to? Okay. Jessica, go ahead. One small statement, and it does impact not only insurance, as you mentioned, it does impact mortgages. I think that is the greater um, impact here when you're looking at rezoning. Because when it comes to buyers of rental mortgages, with the commercial zoning, they don't fall under residential. So the rates are considerably higher. But they keep people with the rates and homes, and the more in the second zone we have, the less important it is in the We know. Yeah. Thank you. Council? Yeah, let's call the question all in favor. <clears throat> Harry. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jess. Okay. Uh, uh, staff reports development permit number 24 281 DP 1002 C Frontage Road. Recommendation the District of Sycamus Council authorize and issue the Highway Commercial Development Permit for the parcel legally described as Lot 1, Section 6, Township 22, Range 7, West of the 6th Meridian, Kamloops Division, Yale District, Plan NEP 72342 1002, Seed Frontage Road, to permit the development of six commercial buildings. Could I get a mover on that? Councillor Evans, Councillor Bailey. Go ahead, Councillor Bushell. Hey, excuse myself. Uh, um, state, was, state the. I was a, a partner in that property. So hey. Excuse Please yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Gort. Let's take this and hope there for a while. Through the chair. So tonight, mm. looking at 1002 Seed Frontage Road, it's just highlighted in yellow. It's currently designated Highway Commercial B, and it's zoned C2 Highway Commercial. So this is the site plan for the proposal. It's six buildings with 38 units total. <laughs> Thanks. So this property is a little bit unique. It abuts three roads, Roma, Frontage Road, and Green Road. And access to this development is proposed um, by Roma Crescent and Green Road only. They're not proposing any access to Seed Frontage Road. For the layout, uh, the facade of the buildings, um, we'll call them two and five, the ones that front Seed Frontage. Um, are um, abutting the property line uh, with a buffer, of course. Um, but that request was made by the planning staff just for um, aesthetics that uh, when people are coming into town, you wouldn't see a bunch of parking. Uh, you would see the front of the buildings and what type of businesses are there. Uh, that also provided uh, wider internal access, more so for emergency management. So they're going to maintain a minimum of eight meters in there. And then the layout um, as proposed aligns with the criteria in the OCP. So the use right now is proposed as commercial buildings. Of course, it's a C2 zone. So we're talking retail, grocery store, office, medical. Uh, if you, if you remember, recall, the C2 zone is very generous. And there's a lot of things that you can do under it. Um, so the intent is to construct buildings one and two, which are the two buildings that front Roma Crescent, uh, and then carry on with the rest of the development. So the, there's a minimum three meter landscape buffer that's required for the development, and the proponent is proposing uh, a landscape buffer that's greater than the three meters throughout all property lines. Uh, there are no variances proposed to this development, so um, it's 
fully within the C2 zone. Uh, there is some application history I thought was worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. We've had two previous development permits that were issued in 2007 and 2008, and those permits have lapsed and the, the land is bare, so those obviously didn't happen. And in 2010, um, another development was considered by council at that time, and it was not approved. In this slide, we just included a couple more, I guess, visuals of the, the development. It did go to the Planning and Development Committee, and their recommendation was to bring it to council. Thanks, Nicole. Council, any questions? Council McGee. Mm -hmm. So building one and two, so it's a proposed phased phase development? Uh, yeah, so they're not doing any type of strata. Um, what they're, I guess I would picture it as similar to probably the Dairy Queen building where they have some empty um, units and then those would be leased out uh, to whoever wants to come in uh, and propose something under that fits under that C2 zone. Yeah, it was, it was, my question is more towards the phase development as opposed to the use. Oh, okay. So, um, so yeah, building one and two you're talking about, or what would be next? What is, what is the sequence of development? Okay. So, um, I guess don't know, um, in the conversation with, at the PDC, the, uh, yes, it would be the owner's agent or developer indicated they would do building one and two first, but they don't have any businesses that they're proposing in there themselves. So they're creating the units for people to come in and, and propose their own business. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay. And then, um, so one and two is what they're saying. And then we don't know what would come in after that. I guess it really depends on how they fill up one and two. Okay, thanks, Nicole. Councillor Bailey. Yeah, maybe just give a little bit more what happened at PDC. And it also depends on what type of uses. So if it's a grocery store, then there's parking requirements, and we kind of talked on that too. So it, it really depends what ultimately gets proposed there because there's different kind of provisions that, that we would require. You know, if it's a restaurant, we have provisions on how many parking spots you, you need and so on. So, um, and that would be different than if you just want to do a warehouse or an office. So that, that C2 zone is incredibly broad. It could allow mm -hmm. whole ton of stuff, or, or it could also just be a storage unit too. So that's quite possible. So uh, if are, are you saying that they're gonna put up these first two buildings and if it requires, say it's a grocery store, mm -hmm. it requires so many parking spaces, this would affect the other three buildings and the size and the layout of them. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. is that, yeah, cool. I believe there's about a hundred spaces for the whole development. So whatever went in there, you would have to figure out, well, some will need more parking, others may not, right? Yeah, correct. Thank you. Councillor Rich. So through the chair. Mm -hmm. Um but as, as a C2, they could turn around and just say we want to make it all storage. Is that correct? Uh, through the chair. So yeah, I just pulled up the C2 zone quick. Storage facility is is a permitted use. Yeah, so that, there's that potential. Okay. Anyone else? Councilor Evans. Nice looking concept buildings. Yeah. They look sharp. Yeah. Great. Okay, let's call the question. All in favor? <laughs> That's carried. Bring Mr. Bushel, Councilor Bushel back in. Okay, we got some crisis communications training. I think, Shauna, are you going to eat us on that? No. Sarah? Yes. Uh, through the chair. We typically discuss this at Committee of the Whole, but we didn't have this committee as the whole day. So that's why it's on the regular council meeting agenda. Uh, earlier this year, uh, staff brought forward a proposal to do some joint communications training with other uh, members of the regional district and the council expressed an interest at that time and staff was to report back with some proposed dates. So we've had further communication with Jan Enns, who's the consultant. She's highly respected um, in the local government realm 
um, with her support and engagement and um, training for elected officials and for staff. Um, and so the the proposal here is to is to do a half day workshop for uh, council and boards, and then a half day workshop for senior staff focused on crisis communications in light of you know the recent wildfire seasons that they've had, particularly in 2023, mm -hmm. indicated as an area where um, the community and also elected officials have expressed you know a desire to have more support and so uh janin's actually submitted a new proposal and the pricing is very similar um and so the cost would be split evenly between the five uh local governments so including city of san arm sycamus uh, revelstoke and golden and then the regional district uh so it would pro approximately be about sixteen hundred dollars per person if all uh, local governments participate. And so I'm here just asking if there's still an interest to participate um, so that I can let uh, Tracy Hughes know at the CSRD and also if there would be a pre preferred date, which is either Thursday, November 14th or Friday, November 15th. Council? Go ahead, Council Rich. Through the chair. Um, Bianca, can you tell us what we have left in our training for us? Um, money. There's room for this. Okay. Thank you. What were the, what were the dates again? Uh, sorry, Thursday, uh, November 14th, and Friday, November 15th. So the 14th and the 15th of yeah. November. Councillor Evans. Hi. Right. Thank you, through the chair. I think this is a good opportunity for us, and um, I'd be willing to go either of those dates. Okay, thank you. I'm with Councillor Evans either one of those days. Councillor Beach? Yeah, I think it would be really good training for us, and I'd be interested. Mr. McCabe? Yes, I won't be in town at that point. Okay. Councillor Rich? Yes. I think it's great. Uh, I think it's really a great uh, opportunity, but unfortunately I'll be in the U.S., so uh, but I, I, I think staff, you know, the correct staff and uh, councillors could be both. Yeah, I don't think we should cancel this time. Let's do it. Okay. So the 14th or the 15th for those that are. Okay. Sounds good. Just pick one that works for everyone that is in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Shushwap Healing Center update. Um, verbal update from our CAO. Go ahead, Daryl. Thank you, Mayor Anderson, members of council. I apologize. I had promised you a slideshow. Yes. Oh. Compete with the other Daryl, but I apologize. So I will deliver next month. <laughs> so pressure's on, and I it'll be good. So, anyways, um, the um, report that you have, the information is uh, a week past. So there's been a lot more work done on uh, the facility. We are on budget. We are on track. We've only lost maybe think about. Days in terms of delays waiting for different subs, you know, electrical, some of it to that effect. Um, we have all of the roof units on site. We've got the generator. Um, from the photos, you can tell that the roof system is in place. A lot of the metal cladding is working. There's a uh, sheet rock that's going up in terms of the, the uh, architectural features on the, on the building. Within the next two to three weeks, there'll be a lot more work done internally on the building. So the, the shell itself is taking shape. You know, the the uh, retaining wall has been done, all of the underground, all electrical. The only thing outside of the building is uh, we anticipate sometime in October to have the uh, power on site. We're just waiting where Daryl through his department is working with Hydro and with the contractors to get that secured. There will be, this power will be underground. So there will be an interruption. We'll have to go through that process. Mm -hmm going under our utilities so it's 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 one of those exciting cautious moments but it'll be nice to get the uh, building to a point where they can energize it um in addition the sidewalk work uh there were some delays and i believe daryl it's first week of october potentially yeah next few weeks we'll be lining that up yeah, yeah. so that'll be the sidewalk work on the south side of the building and then the metal cladding, like in terms of defining um, the rooms within the structure, 
is ongoing over the next two to three weeks up to uh, um, November. But based on our site meeting that we had a week ago, um, uh, the, the contractor is pretty confident that the building will be uh, available come January. Wow, awesome. So I know that there was some talk about December, but they said optimistically January. So without any delays, and we don't foresee that unless some of the subs, you know, have delays. In addition to that, um, we uh, we had an initial meeting with uh, splat scene representatives, uh, and this is about the traditional healing space, which is theirs to determine color, actually, so the flooring, color of the room, you know, what uh, they would like to do with the space. Um, that was an initial meeting. Uh, the intent was to inform, and now we've authored a letter just to um, to their committee, set up a meeting in the next two, two and a half weeks, that, that in, those aspects will be resolved. Color, flooring. Right now the space, and I believe the space is roughly about 30 by 30 by 35. You know, so adjacent to that, you've seen the floor plans where the, the community space could accommodate 250 people. This is a, a smaller space, but to be quite adequate for their purposes. We're just anxious to hear uh, the type of activities that they would undertake to do in the building, smudging cultural mm. ceremonies. And when you exit the building uh, to the west, there's a landing and uh, it's all concreted out. And then the sidewalk basically goes to the south and wraps around the building to the main entrance on the southeast end. So there's an area where um, they could do ceremonies. We're just, we're, we're eager to hear what they have to say and what they have plans for and build some of our efforts around that. And just an update on the medical end of the building. So once again, like, and, and Karen was here and, and provided really good information on the current claim, but this is kind of like looking forward to the new building. So we'll have two family practitioners and you've got the nurse practitioner, the three MOAs in terms of support staff. We have signed MOUs for the new building. No leases are done yet, but this is Eagle Valley Community Support Society, um, Halo Perinatal Services and Lactation Consulting. Um, we've had discussions with uh, uh, dental practice mm -hmm. looking at that third party space. So they're formulating going through what the cost would be to them. Shoe Schwab Cardiac Society, Functional Physio and Wellness, and the Shoe Schwab Hearing Clinic. And the e questions of interest received, but no MOU is Life Labs and a pharmacist. So in terms of that space that's been dedicated, so there was a lot of uh, movement on that. So in the coming month, uh, we all agree sitting down that we'd like to have everything in place by November into December, <clears throat> but it's all dependent on these individuals. Message here is very happy and it's positive. <clears throat> a lot's happening. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Carol. That's awesome. On time, on budget. Yes. Perfect. Council, Council, <clears throat> uh, through the chair. Um, just to address it, there's been a bit of chatter around town um, that the building won't be opening for two years and that there's no budget for the interior. So I'm wondering if we can just um, address it and that may be you, Daryl, or Bianca. Um, I think I know the answer, but let's get it on a recording. So will the building open within two years? Absolutely. <laughs> January, and do we have money to do the interior? So there is a budget for all the interior. So from the medical end, they'll be moving a lot of equipment over. <clears throat> Excuse me, but for example, like in the uh, community space, tables and chairs, artwork, everything. When you enter the building, you will have a chair to sit in and all of the, well, we're anticipating that all of the medical end of the building, right, will be opening. But the medical from our piece, like our uh, medical clinic, will be fully functional. Absolutely great. Thank you. Councillor Bushnell. I think uh, Daryl answered most of my questions, but I just, me and Malcolm and Pam might be able to help too. Um, in regards to the equipment inside, we is it, can you give us a, just a refresher or an update? Is there any update on the, we were trying to get a grant uh, for some interior stuff where we're not? Well, I think we did get one grant, but uh, yeah, we're, we're chasing down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe back to Daryl on that. 
<laughs> uh, no, absolutely. So, you know, we haven't exhausted our efforts to pursue granting opportunities to assist with uh, the completion of this facility. Absolutely. Okay. No, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor Bailey. No, and I, to Councillor Rick, <clears throat> about some confusion. I think that the, some confusion comes around the commercial space. Because as we approved this project, it was never anticipated we were going to fill out or construct the commercial space. So that's what I think has allowed or led to some people being confused. All right, there is a there is a commercial component, and depending on whoever goes in there, we'll we'll finish that space. But all the space that we are responsible for is fully funded and is going to be fitted out. So I think that's that's where some people kind of got confused. So I've certainly been trying to make sure people understand that all of the stuff that we're responsible for, everything's in the budget, and we actually have a reserve fund, I believe, for the um, the interior fit out as well. Yeah. Go ahead, see you. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Member Council. So to that, Councillor Bailey, absolutely. Those leasehold improvements, you know, for the for the businesses that I spoke of, including that third party space. Right now, there's no concrete slab. Right, it's all ready for them to put in the plumbing, and then we will do the concrete. But all those mm -hmm. leasehold um, improvements are borne by the leaseholder. Because we don't know, like it, not knowing who's going to be in there, and and that the intent was just to build a room, yeah, right, and then have them do their own improvements. Perfect, makes sense. Councillor McCabe. Yeah, more of a statement than a question. Um, this is good news for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're taking our current facility that's owned by the community and moving it into the new building. So we'll be moving from roughly twenty five hundred square feet to roughly seventy five hundred square feet, roughly. Uh, so we're expanding our primary care, that's the primary care space by roughly threefold uh, to accommodate our growing community. And I think it's great news. We have a doctor that's advertising for patients. Where do you see that anywhere in Canada? Only in Sycamus. <laughs> Pretty exciting. All right. <clears throat> Let's move along. Forest Service Road towards BC Timber Sales. Daryl, do you want to? Members of Council. So we've been informed by BC Timber Sales that uh, they will make available the following dates, uh, October 7th, October 8th, and October 9th. So that's a Monday to Wednesday. Prior discussion of Council, I'm interested in going up into that area. And BC Timber Sales would gladly take uh, members of Council up for a tour. The log logistics of how to get up there and what type of transportation as opposed to dropping in by helicopter, you know, those to be, to be worked out. But if you, you know, could let staff know what dates you would prefer, or if we can just maybe lock in two dates and then ask them if they can sort of arrange your schedule around those two days. Go ahead. Oops, sorry. No, that's okay. Through the chair. Um, uh, the the third day, it's like the seventh, eighth. I just am confirming um, going back. So seventh, eighth, or the tenth of October. Well, the tenth, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were also interested to hear from council as to what areas they would like to tour. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, through the chair, I think um, you know a tour from up the Sycamus uh, <clears throat> Sycamus Creek uh, Forestry Service Road and. Mm -hmm. uh, and come back down on the owlhead. So it's just a, it's an, it's an actually bicycle loop that people use and a hiking loop that people use. And it's not a very long tour. It's probably take on a, um, if you, if we went up on side by sides or, or vehicle, probably side by sides, it would be probably an hour and a half, you know, of, of stopping and saying, this is where the bike path is coming through and something like that, you know. So, uh, yeah, and I'm available whenever. So, uh, Councilor Rich. Through the chair, I, I'm going to echo Gord. I think we need to do that loop. And for me, 7th or 8th, 10th uh, is pushing on to um, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So some of us may be taking a bit of a longer Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, do you guys want to get back to Sarah with the 7th or the 8th, or do you want to make that decision right now? Councilor McKay? Oops. Make a decision now. Okay, pick a date. I'm open to either. 
I'm good for both. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And that week's a little bit up in the air, so just pick whatever works and I'll try to be there. I'm gonna call the eight. Yeah. Eight is good for me. I'm up in the air too, so I'll join in whichever one works. I'll figure it's it out. Tuesday. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, notices of motion, Riverside Water Main Replacement Project, Councilor Bushel. There's a proposed motion that council and staff had a, have a discussion about the removal of the interlocking brick sidewalk between Capel Street and Martin Street for the water main upgrade and replacing them with an asphalt sidewalk. Um, Councilor Bushel, do you want to start with start that conversation? Yeah, I started to uh, receive some phone calls from some Marylanding owners and um, uh, myself and uh, my partners, we are the developer of Marylanding. And um, uh, so we're still in touch with a lot of the owners and they were really concerned that we were going to downgrade to an asphalt. Um, so, you know, I, I started thinking about it. I reviewed our development permit that we were issued and, you know, the district of Sigamu said, indicated to the developer that, you, you know, that we were to put paving stones in there, which we did. And uh, Mayor Landing has kept their paving stones up as best they can, I think, um, with the district's help um, and, and public works. And then um, I also looked at our OCP and our OCP calls for pavers on Riverside and also the waterfront walkway. If we ever, you know, do the waterfront walkway, the areas that are on land would be pavers and the ones out in front of the, over top of the water would probably be flow through, like down at Moose Mulligan's. But, um, and then I started looking at Riverside and I, I, I mean, we're kind of setting a precedent. I know we voted on this and I, I'm not sure where I was, but I did review the minutes of the budget meeting when we dis discussed this in our budget meetings in last fall. And then I went back and I reviewed the minutes when we voted on it. And there was not a lot of discussion and we just kind of, I, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or, um, but I, and I know where Daryl's coming from because I know public works you know, it does take time and, and work to keep up pavers, but I'm a little concerned about the asphalt and the roots and the trees along Riverside. There's some pretty big trees along Riverside when you get down, you know, by Papa's and places like that. And if you look at the Old Town Bay, uh, which isn't very old, it's walkway out there and it has a paver, it has uh, asphalt all the way from the start of Old Town Bay right to the, down to the marina. Um, there's lots of lots of little bumps on them and ripples, and those are all the roots coming up. And I've even seen mushrooms push through. So I'm not sure if that's 50 millimeters or uh, you know roadways are about 100 millimeters, you know, sidewalks are about 50 millimeters, but they do push up and the roots push up, and it just causes a little bit of a problem. But thinking about setting a precedent, I mean, pretty much all of Riverside's done other than. If you look at this old Sun and Fun, uh, the three boy site, which is going to be developed fairly soon, if you want to start at Capel. So the four residents there, the three boys residents, and then you look at um, uh, the Sun and Fun residents just next to uh, Mare Landing. Pods uh, has uh, interlocking brick that, that does need a little bit of work, but not much. Um, you move on to Papa's, they have interlocking brick. Riverside has interlocking brick. Then you move on to Waterways old site. It doesn't have, uh, but there's plans to do a development there. So they would have to put pavers in as well. And then you move, carry on. Blue Water doesn't have, but it's only a hundred feet. And then you're on to Riverside, uh, uh, or not Riverside, uh, you're on to uh, the Narrows. Again, they have interlocking brick. And then it basically goes all the way through the roundabout, all the way down past, um, uh, the marina around the corner by the red barn has interlocking brick around the corner and then it goes all the way out towards um, uh, the boat launch. So that if we if we start removing it now, we're going to be are we going to be removing it all the way along Riverside and we're going to do away with the OCP's ruling. And I know we're going to update the OCP, but I would like to hear Daryl and maybe you know just, just let's talk about it. I I, I think it's a Myself, I mean, it's quaint. It's that's the reason why the OCP was done like that, and maybe Deb Deb's was involved in the mm -hmm. wasn't. Um, um, but I just think it's it would be a shame later on when we said 
we did it all and we removed it all and and then we're always repairing it all the time with uh, the roots coming up and stuff like that. So that's that's my my concern. I know the Marylandy people really want to keep it. Um, I I mean, you look at I looked at Bologna's waterfront. It's all interlocking brick. I mean, you go to Europe, it's everywhere. Um, it does need maintenance, but so does concrete and so does asphalt. You know, concrete's not so much, but asphalt for sure. I just thought we should talk about it, and I know we voted on it. But we should, before we start pulling it all up and and doing that, it's 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 a uh, it's quaint, you know. That's what interlocking bricks all about. Well, that's that's my concern. Thanks, Councillor Bushel. Sarah, yes, do the chair just a point of order? So, Councillor Bushel has um, proposed the motion to discuss it. So, if you're open to discussing it, just that we would need a seconder. Okay. Thank you. Daryl or Daryl, one of you want to hint on? Sure. Uh, to the chair. Uh, we did talk about it at the budget time. It, we talked about a lot of things at the budget time. And those were long, grueling days. It's hard to remember everything. I, I do remember the point I wanted to make about the paving stone is that we could achieve that look with concrete and get away, get away from the pavers and get away from the maintenance that... 75 to 90 freeze thaw cycles in Sycamus every year. Just a lot of a lot of maintenance and, and trouble with the paving stones over time. Um, so if you remember, there was a pretty, pretty good cost difference between the asphalt and and the concrete. So I mean, I think we presented it and talked about it at that time. Maybe we didn't think about the implications everywhere. Uh, can we revisit it now? We can, we can, but I just have to kind of give you the whole picture. So if we do that, um, the contract that we've entered into now for the water line uh, includes all that work, the water line, the services, the paving of the road, the sidewalk restoration, the curb and gutter, some storm work. It's, it's all inclusive. So the company that bid on it um, has had their marching orders for quite a number of months now. They've gone out and they've got their subs lined up to do their work. So so the sub that'll be paving the road is expecting to pave the sidewalk at this point. So they're secured in their own contract. Now, us as a district are allowed to change the scope of the project. My understanding is within 15%, we can say, we don't need 15% of that asphalt or we need 15% more or anywhere between zero and 15 is fine. If we're to remove a component of the contract like asphalt and it exceeds the 15%, which I would suggest that wide sidewalk all the way down would, I don't have that percentage, but it's, it's a scope change greater than 15%. We would be obligated to pay the contractor the profit that they were entitled to on that sidewalk. So, so there'd be a cost implication right off the hop. We're saying we're not using you for the sidewalk, we're gonna go a different direction. We just have to be mindful that they would be, they, they would be deserving of, or they would be okay. able to get that, that profit money. Um, we would then look at alternatives and we're, we're very late in the game in terms of where we are, you know, end of summer. Um, the healing center in the last update, we were talking about doing some sidewalks there. There was a lot of interest to do that, the sidewalks at the healing center. I think one formally came forward. Everybody's really busy. When we put things out or when jobs go out to the subs early, you get good pricing. Right now, I think we'd pay a premium for it. I, I, I'm just sure we'd pay a lot more. So there was a cost assigned with going with concrete. It was more. I think we'd pay even more than that at this point. So just, just letting you know. Um, and then we're setting a precedent because we're on to Riverside Part 1. We've got Riverside Part 2 next year. So we have to think about that too. So if we're going to change, that would probably some, be something you want to do all the way through, which is a bigger cost as, as well. So 
Could we look at it? Yeah, we could. It would cost us more. And I guess I would be concerned that we couldn't line up a concrete company in time. And I would hate to think that that sidewalk couldn't be maintained through the winter. I okay, know we're a ways out yet, but um, in terms of a contractor's world, there's a lot of them just saying no to jobs because it's they're busy. So it puts it puts that part of the project a little bit at risk. That's yeah, so that's what I got. Thanks, Daryl. Councilor McCabe. Yeah, thank you through the chair. Yeah, and with respect to operations, I know um, it looks like we might be changing horses in the middle of the stream. And uh, and the contractor would be allowed for a specific performance for loss of profit uh, on, on the asphalt. Um, but I think for form and character of our community, and we're branding ourselves as a, a small resort town, I think we need to maintain that form and character, even if it's at a cost, because tourism is our bread and butter and and. I think we need continuity in our form and character. And, and I think even though it's more expensive, if we're talking either concrete that's stamped to look like bricks or, yeah, I think that's what staff is suggesting if, if we do a change. So I apologize to operations for changing horses in the middle of the stream and dabbling in, in an existing contract. But I, I think for the overall good of the community and for long-term, I, I think I support the change, even though I voted for pay in the first place. Councillor Bailey, then Councillor Beach. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, I didn't actually realize that a lot of it was pavers. I went down there the other day because I don't really have a much of occasion to actually walk down the side. It's not not my. Yeah, just haven't really done it. And then I was surprised that it's about fifty percent. Maybe it's forty percent. I didn't realize that there was that much actually already done. So it seems like this is a bit of a dilemma because whatever we do is changing something already there, right? I mean, the pavers are there, so we're going to have to, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just not a simple thing, right? Like if we went ahead and we did asphalt, well, we still have those other sections that are pavers. And then what are we going to do there? Are we going to just eventually do that all asphalt? We kind of have to, I think, pick a direction now. So I, I kind of agree with, with Malcolm that um, I think this is probably the time where we, we pick the form and character and the look, and then that's how it's going to have to kind of go forward. And I don't, I'm not sure if that's going to make more sense to stick with the pavers because we have a good, a lot of that section's already done if you go down Riverside or if it makes more sense to do stamp concrete or, or whatever, but and maybe that's something Daryl will need to look at just on the cost benefit analysis or kind of what it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Through the chair, I think pavers at this stage, I, I'm not sure we could get a pavers in here on that scale to do this. Now, you know, the question could be asked, why aren't we just repairing the services that we're disrupting? If you remember back, tied to the capital projects was the Moore Street. We wanted dedicated power because we had that power line running under that sidewalk all the way along. So that was coming out. And then we were looking at a whole new, what are we going to do with the sidewalk? So uh, pavers, just to pull it off, I I'm not sure we even could. I could explore it and see, but... Again, we're we're the window's closing, so Councillor Rich. Through the chair. Yeah, so I, I guess my first thing is to apologize to Sycamus and Public Works because I didn't learn enough about this. And it seemed like a pretty simple thing. And as I drive around and look at sidewalks, I've walked it. There is a lot of pavers on there. Um, and we do have concrete down down Main Street. And I actually spent some time in Enderby today and looked at their sidewalks. So I'm learning a lot about sidewalks. And it does seem like the asphalt does heave quite a bit. And when we have people in scooters and walker and that kind of thing, and it's kind of a loop. Like for me anyways, I kind of see that as you go downtown, you hit Riverside, you get onto the little trail and off you go. It's a, it's a nice walking loop. And I mean, honestly, I, I, I think personally, I, I miss the bus on this one and that we need to spend the extra money. And it's unfortunate that we're we're gonna have to spend extra because 
you know, we missed the bus, but I know on this one, I missed the bus and, and I really feel like it needs to be, um, I don't know if pavers are right because they heave and stuff and we are, what are we, maybe Malcolm can answer, but I think we're 45% seniors here in town. So the scooters and the walkers and stuff are actually something we need to think about is our elderly that are traveling that loop too. And the, the pavers tend to heave a little bit too. So if you're in a scooter, you're gonna be a little bit bumpy, um, but the concrete seems to be kind of the longest life and the smoothest and that we can get a nice look. And it's a nice um, in between. Uh, for everyone. So yeah, I, I mean, I apologize. I didn't know. I, I honestly didn't know sidewalks were this complicated. And now I do. That's the beach. Yeah, um, exactly. I think that the seniors have raised the issue that that um, some of the sidewalks are are troublesome for them in their expensive e-scooters and stuff because they, they shake them up and and uh, the root, the asphalt is not good because it does heave. And yes, some of the pavers do heave as well. So I honestly think that stamped concrete um, may be more expensive, but I think it's a better finish for everybody and it's more durable. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Bushel. Oh, um, I was just going to ask through the chair, I was going to ask Bianca or. or... <laughs> um, I remember when I think we budgeted, I think Daryl can help you, it was 1.4 for concrete and it was 1.2, but we, did we save like about $220,000 going to asphalt? But we're like, we, we budgeted one, I think, I think our finance meeting letter said we, we saved 200 and something. I don't think it was through the chair. I don't think it was quite that much, but there was a chunk. Yeah. Um, the, the difference now could could easily be the number that you're that you're saying. Just a suggestion, because I'm 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 hearing that we may want to explore this quickly and see what we can do. Um, a suggestion. I, I could look into this and and see what what kind of pricing we can get in a hurry for hinted stamped concrete. Uh, I can explore the paver thing. I don't think we're going to be able to pull that together, but I can look into it and see if that's a possibility. A third option, uh, which you may or may not want to consider, we pave it with just a standard concrete sidewalk. Give you a light, little nicer finish than asphalt. Uh, might be easier to pull off in terms of getting a contractor available to do that. The curb and gutter guy might be able to do that and just broom it. So I could give you three options if if you so wish. House Evans. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a dilemma indeed. I, I um. I'm concerned about the cost, and I I know the pavers are not the way to go. Um, but uh, I I would say, if Daryl's going to do the research, um, that he should just go with the the concrete um, research and and leave the pavers out of the out of his time and effort because uh, I just don't think that that's something that we should pursue myself. Okay, thanks, Councillor McCabe. And thank you. I, I agree with uh, Councillor Evans. I, I think that's staff to put their time on stamp concrete costs. Councillor Bailey. Uh, I'm just wondering, because we're going to do the rest of Riverside, we're going we're gonna to have the same issue probably at this next finance meeting. Like, we we need to we need to pick something right. If we're going to go concrete, the whole thing has to be concrete because we're going to get to the next section of the pavers, and this is not an issue that just goes away today, right? So, I, I maybe maybe it deserves a little bit more research is what I'm I'm saying. I could come back or or we could I, I like I'm not quite sure how to do it, but the next section of Riverside we're going to have the same problem. So it's either. Pavers, concrete, it, it just has to be something all kind of that makes sense as we go down Riverside. Because this is going to be a project that we're going to do for the next two, three years. Daryl, do you want to give us a couple options as far as costing on stamped concrete? I could try and find a couple of, yeah. And then timing is the big thing for me. Like the water line, the new water line is in. It's not live, but it's like they're moving. So 
Uh, won't be long. They'll be doing individual services on one side. They're going to have both water lines live, and then they're going to convert over, and they'll be on that side. So uh, I need to jump on it. And then in terms of communication, and and I guess I'll I'll, I'll defer to to Daryl on on how we communicate our options to council in light of the fact that there's UBCM coming and people not here. So I'm not sure how we best achieve that, but. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor, Council. Yeah, because you probably won't get the information back till next week sometime. I'm gonna push like hack till the end of the week, see if I get some by Friday. Okay, that'd be even better. So then we can, once we, once we get that information, and we'll come up with a plan and we'll just articulate it out to council. And then we'll have to come up plan if you want to make a change then, right? Through polio or whatever. We can do something so that we can get a resolution. Unless you are caught, no, I, I wouldn't even suggest just let, let us get the quotes, yeah. get that information. And then uh, if we have to call a special meeting, we'll bring you in. Councillor Evans. Even if that special meeting is a, a call with all of us for a meeting like that to, to get it done, because time is of the essence here. We can huddle at UBCM too. We can get together at UBCM. That's what I mean. You need us to get together there. Okay. Thank you, Dara. Okay. Dara. Uh, through the chair, I did um, response to Councillor Bushel's question around the costing. I did send the email to Bianca that has the initial. I didn't know if you wanted to share that with them. Councillor Bushel was asking around the different options and what the pricing was. I emailed it to you. Did you get it? Anyways, I can yeah. I can forward it out if you guys want just to re, um to rehash it. I, no, I think you sent it to all of us. Did we I? we all have okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we all have it. Okay. Um, okay. There's the first and seconder on the motion, which is really for you to have a discussion with staff about this matter. So if there's a action um, attached to it, directing staff, maybe there's an amendment to the motion, directing staff. Go ahead, Gord. May, I'd like to make that a mo amendment, if possible, that uh, we direct staff to uh, uh, review, double check um, three options, and and uh, come back to uh, present the council. Thank you. The first and seconder. The first. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> the ones, the first and seconder that we have right now, we can keep with the amendment. Yeah, Gordon Siobhan. Okay, let's just call the question all in favor. And that's carried. Thanks. Sorry. I'm sorry. Just I'm sorry, Daryl. I didn't see you. Just for clarity, uh Councillor Bushel, you, you said to get back to you with three options. So we know the one option is is the existing asphalt plan and the cost. Plain concrete and stamp concrete. Is that what we're after? Okay. Is that, I don't think we're gonna get a price on the paving stone. I can try, but I mean, you could try and just just say say you can't get one. You can't get one. And paving, uh, stamp paid, and pavers. That's what's in the OCP. No, that's not true. You said paving, stamp paved, and point of yeah, paved pavement. No, con pavement uh, point of order. Concrete. We're <laughs> gonna finish. For yeah, uh, um, pavement is not in the OCP, but uh, pavers. Uh, and stamp concrete is in the OCP. Okay. I'll have to. Councillor Rich. And through the chair, just because I don't know, I've been reading way too much about sidewalks. But when you say plain cement, it's just, it's broomed, right? So people don't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course. I, yeah, with cuts, right? Like, too much information right now about <laughs> sidewalks. Thank you. Councillor McCabe, did you want to add something? Councillor Bush will cover this. Thank you. Councillor Bish, did you want to add something? No, I agree. Is everyone good? There we go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> council voted on the amendment to the main motion, and that's for directing staff to review um, the options, so pavers and stamp concrete, and then report back to council. And you voted on that, and then we're just going to vote on the main motion as amended. And brush concrete. Oh, sorry. And, and, and brush, yeah. Okay. Brushed in there. So <laughs> pavers, pavers, stamp, stamp concrete, and brush concrete. Thank you. Okay, all in favor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Um, no resolutions. Um, we have correspondence um 
Splat Scene and Residential School Monument uh, Planning Group Orange Shirt Day Invitation and Donation Request. Sarah, do you want to speak to that? Uh, yes, through the chair. So we briefly touched on this at the last meeting, but it wasn't added as a, a correspondence because we received it after the deadline. And so this is a formal invitation uh, from the Splat, Splat Jean, um Residential School and Monument Planning Group um, for council to attend the Orange Shirt Day event on September 30th, which is a Monday this year in Enderby. Uh, there is a walk. I know that in the letter there, they, they express that they are looking for um, volunteers for this event, um, that there's t-shirts that can be purchased, orange t-shirts, and that the funding goes to the, the Residential School Survivor uh, Monument Planning Group, that project. Um, and so just a few things here. Is council um, interested in t-shirts? And then there's also just an, an option to provide a donation. Um, and of course, we're, we can respond whether there are council members that, that will be attending this event. So purchasing a t-shirt, is that part of the donation? Because it is a fundraiser, correct? Uh, the t-shirts are a separate piece. They're $25 a piece. Um, so just if there's interest from council to purchase those, um, there's also the option to do just a donation to the event. And then, of course, um, who's attending. Did uh, we donate to this last year? And how much did we donate? Well, I don't believe so, no. No, we just did T-shirts last year. Did they request t or donation last year? I don't think so. Councillor Rich? Through the chair. No, we didn't donate anything. We didn't. We didn't. So the t-shirt campaign just started. Um, it's $25 a t-shirt, and the profits from the t-shirt goes towards the monument. So it actually is like a donation towards the monument. Um, we had looked at them for the schools, um, and I was just having a hard time getting funding um, to be able to, to get t-shirts for the schools. So we haven't done that this year, but hopefully next year we've got a bit more time because this is a new initiative um but yes yeah, so if you bought bought a t-shirt for 25 bucks they take that money for the cost of t-shirt everything else goes to the monument okay councillor evans just a question um so if we if we're going on the 30th um is that where we would pick up our t-shirt like if me and sandra and laura were just going to buy one and go to the event, would we buy them there and the donation goes towards the projects, how it works? Or are they asking us if we want one now and we order them ahead? Through the chair, there's, yeah, either option. So the district could purchase t-shirts if they, if council wanted to um, purchase. I know, I mean, our Sean is here and sorry, because we have purchased t-shirts in the past, not from Splat Jean. I think it was a couple of years ago um, for staff, um, but this is an option if, if the district wanted to, there's also the option that you can attend the event and purchase them individually. And they also have them at different locations. And I can confirm where those are and share those out with, with council and with staff. So to Siobhan, sorry, to your point, wouldn't if wouldn't this be like a um, um like a newsletter to the school if parents want to purchase orange shirts for their children that day? I guess I'm not, I don't know why we'd be buying everyone an orange t-shirt. I think it's a personal preference, personal choice, and appearance. My my thoughts on that. Go ahead. Yeah, through the chair. So there is a company that has come in and offered them to the school, but it actually the money to actually doesn't go to splat scene and it actually is a for-profit company. So if Sick Moose had decided, it's actually I've talked to Deanne, who is um, our First Nations rep who is doing the t-shirts and um, we're too late to order t-shirts this year for the school. That's off the, um, because they have them printed, right? Um, but they will have enough to sell. Uh, so we could order them as council and go through Deanne. And then that money goes to the Splat Scene mo monument that sits on Splat Scene lands. Um, so there has been an option for the schools, but it's been a for-profit, just a company that's like, hey, do you want to buy some t-shirts? And that doesn't go back um, specifically to our First Nation partners. So parents have an opportunity to buy an orange shirt from Diane or Deanne. 
No, not this year. No, it the 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 invite that came into the schools is for a for profit that doesn't benefit our splat scene park. But we can still get t shirts. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, we, we can still buy t-shirts, but the school can't buy t-shirts is what I'm picking up. Like, and I don't understand why the school can't buy t-shirts as well for, if not the school, the parents themselves, if they want the orange t-shirts for the kids, the same as if we want one, we all can purchase one, correct? Through the chair, you could get a hold of Splatsy and see if they have t-shirts left and you could buy them. Um, I was in Enderby today and they're on sale for $34.99 at uh, the gas station um, on the Bandland right now. Uh, so absolutely, you could go as an individual and buy them, but we can't get um, a, a group um, discount for them anymore. Okay. At this time. Thank okay. you. Councilor Bushel. Councilor McKay. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that um, the individual councils who are going to attend buy their shirts on site from Splatson. That's clean and simple. That way we're not buying for teachers for folks who aren't there. And that uh, we make a donation of $500. Pam? Second. Sorry, that's me. Second. I second that. Is there any more? To Discussion, Councillor Rich. The chair, I just don't know why we wouldn't buy t-shirts that we could even donate to the school for the kids that can't afford t-shirts. If we're gonna give them $500 cash, why don't we buy 500 bucks in t-shirts and then the kids have t-shirts to wear because there's not every kid in the school that parents have $25 that maybe, like in our high school, we have 50 First Nations kids. Um, so I would suggest if we were gonna spend the $500 um, as a donation that we put it towards and then donate those t-shirts back to the kids and, and give it to our indigenous teachers and they can hand them out. Councillor Bailey. I, I just wanna ask our finance person, we've been donating quite a bit. What does our funds look like in that category? Our donated pocket that was specific for donations ran out when we did the Eagle Valley. So we don't yeah. actually have a budget. We don't actually have a budget remaining for donations. Yeah. Um, I think I remembered that because, yeah, when we, we yes, for Eagle Valley, yeah. So, but I think, sorry, go ahead. I, I would just, well, since we don't have a budget, then we have to figure out where this money would come from to begin with. So I don't, I like, I'm not quite sure, but, um, you know, I, I think since we're depleting our donation budget, maybe something a little more modest than 500 would be appropriate. But um, we can also encourage individuals to donate directly as well. And it may be that through our own means, but also do it through, through a, a notice that we put on our website or through our council notes letters. I mean, there, there's other ways that we can support this initiative. It's, is what I'm suggesting too. Great, and I think we're talking about two different things here. I think. I, yeah, I think so. I, I, we're talking about individuals buying T-shirts and donating to this cause the five hundred dollars that they're asking for because they're asking for five hundred dollars plus T-shirts plus the purchase of a T-shirt. Is that correct? Through the chair. So they are asking if you would like to donate to this event. It would be appreciated, but they. They're not saying specifically buy. They're just saying yes. so it's great that stickers available for purchase um, at the wall um, and on site at the Slatching uh, Community Center. Um, yeah. Councillor Evans. Yeah, I I then would echo what uh, Councillor McKeough said, and um, I'll go to the event, and me and my family will get the stuff there, the teachers there, and and those donations will go towards the cause. Bianca. Um, I'm just thinking of some other options too. Like if every if counselors would like to purchase their own t-shirts, maybe you're not going to the event or whichever. We were talking about with staff. If staff wanted to purchase a t-shirt, potentially just doing a group order, we can ever collect money from everyone and go that way. So that might be a better option than we're kind of, you know, sending off one check for the district of Sycamus for, you know, t-shirts that go to this organization. That could be an option too where everyone, you know, contributes. Councilor Rich. Uh, through the chair. 
Yeah, I think just because, again, we're late to the game on this one, that maybe next year we're, um, you know, our budget meetings, we look at it and that everybody, if they want to get their own T-shirts or order through, um, and, and that's our donation. If we're, because um, I know we give $5,000 to Arts Council and we've given $5,000 to, so if we're depleted, I think the best thing to do is if we want T-shirts, then we can buy them. And if we want to do a group order, but trying to scramble money and, and maybe next year put it in the budget. Because the other thing is the um, health center will be open. And and again, maybe with some organization that um, next year we do a little um, ceremony here on the 30th. Okay, so that's for each. Yeah, just a question directed to Councillor Rich um, to the schools. What's this, is there any sense of whether or not there would be an interest in a teacher taking a group of kids and participating in the walk? Right. Through the chair, I can talk to both Indigenous teachers and see if they do have a, um, at school on the 26th, well, well class, they do have a ceremony and then they do Bannock and um, our First Nations kids are recognized and, and someone does come in and, and educate. So on the 26th, because that's a school day, uh, we do actually do, like both schools um, do do uh, ceremony. House Evans. Yeah. Agree, what she said because it's. I think because it's a stat, it would be hard for teachers to get since they're on the day up. But they'll encourage the kids to go. I know they will. So okay. So back to Councillor McCabe's um, motion that we those that are going go and purchase orange T-shirts and do the walk. And is that what your motion was? Well, the second half was a five hundred dollar donation. Um, we don't have that in the budget. We don't have that. I could amend my motion just that who's ever involved in the law go buy a t-shirt and that, that those funds go directly towards Splatson. I, if we do a group order, if I was listening to Councillor Rich, that goes to that not for profit and not to Splatson. Am I correct? In no, Bianca, if Bianca orders them, then they will from Splatson, that will go. She'll do a group order from them. And, yep. So that money goes to Splat Scene and not for that for-profit organization that makes the T-shirt. Okay. Can someone second that amendment? Thanks, Councillor Rich. Um, all in favor? And opposed? No, no, I'm not opposed. I, I so I was. It looked like. Oh, before yeah. that, I, it looked like Sarah had something important to say. <laughs> Through the chair, I just thought. Okay, so we have the motion, right? To, to for the teacher the t-shirts and then the donation and now you've amended it to can you just repeat the amendment just to remove the donation okay thing. okay and you voted in favor of that and so now we vote on the in motion as amended we're voting on the new motion as amended the main motion is amended okay so we've got a first and do we have a first and second around that so we're going to vote the main motion down because no <clears throat> You voted on the motion to amend, correct? Mm -hmm. And now you're just going to vote on the main motion as amended. Okay. <laughs> I think, didn't we just do that? <laughs> okay. All in favor of the main motion as amended. Okay. Carried. And um, I agree with you, Councillor um, Bailey. People can get on Facebook, encourage people to, you know, on social media. All right. Oh, that was interesting. Okay. Um, <laughs> Todd Kyla, request for support, Paul, uh, Sheep Paw Wall at 102 Martin Street and 902 Riverside Avenue. Um, Daryl, did you want to speak to this? And then yes, okay. Mayor and some members of council. So we've we've provided notices have been provided by from Mr. Kylo uh, seeking support from the district on his uh, Section 35 application under the Fisheries Act. What Mr. Kylo was seeking is um, compensation within the SPIA for the removal of the building. Mr. Kylo has a, a property, it's on the screen, so on Riverside. Um, the purpose of uh, or intent of his moving forward is to uh, remove the building closest to the channel. And then there's uh, an application pending with respect to developing uh, said lands. 
Mr. Kylo through his application under the Fisheries Act for that Section 35, seeking two things. One is a support from the District, District of Sycamus for uh, not what is recommended by the province in terms of riprap, but a sheet pile wall, which is an undertaking on behalf of the proponent. And he just wants to confirm, because we've done a study, there's a study undertaken in terms of that, and this is dated back to 2020. And there's various options that were made available. And um, RIPRAF was not, it, it's identified, but they speak to Gavian. But when you look at the, the style, character and form, and more importantly, its ability to function and do what is proper. So away from a berm, glass, there's many options. But the sheet pile is a preferred approach within that document. And from meeting with Daryl, the staff supports that if given the option. And, it's, and it is our understanding that for some reason, the public, the, the applicant had uh, had a report done that had sheet pile, but the province came back suggesting that it be riprap. It's conflicting. It doesn't make any sense. And personally, I support uh, Mr. Kylo's attempt to get a support letter from the district to provide clarification from a district of Sycamus position on that very matter. And the other part of that application would be seeking compensation through the Fisheries Act in the SPIA, because right now it hasn't been determined or a decision has been made relative to uh, the repairing area regulation. Okay, thank you. We have, um, when the um, study was done, um, I think we all, that that council was all in favor of the um, sheep pile wall because of the self um, dredging factor. Riprap would be something that would hang up silt and flowing into the channel. So sheet wall, the water would flow and continue to flow um, without interruption, keeping self dredging the channel itself. So it was something that uh, Council of the Day was fully in favor of as well. So, um, Gord, uh, Councilor Bushell, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I just think another thing we're setting the precedence that we uh, we have no riprap mm -hmm. on, on the uh, east side of the channel, none whatsoever. It's all either gabion baskets, sheet pile, which the district put in under the Ridley Bridge, and uh, there is some concrete which has failed. And um, um, and just grass, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I mean, we supported this back then when the study was done, and uh, I continue to support it. If you look at any of the places in Europe, they're all sheet piled. I mean, you can go down the uh, Dan Danube River, and it, it's for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of sheet pile. It's lasted forever, forever. And uh, and you look at the Gabion baskets. Moose Mulligans has failed. The Marina's failed. Three Boys is failing now. They're all failing. So Gavians fail and they rust out. So I totally support this, and I would make a motion to to provide uh, uh, Todd with a with a support letter for sure. Okay, I would second that. <laughs> Councillor Bailey. Yeah. So we've we've approved the project and everything. So. I'm just trying to understand. We want to just recommend to the province that they, you know, the project's been approved. Is it the, are we doing the same project or do you think about something no, different? Was, or? The problem comes, <laughs> if I may, just, yeah. the problem comes from, there's a wrapper regulation, mm -hmm. which is provincial. Uh, it's very convoluted and it doesn't allow for, um, you know, so what I did through the wrapper, uh, regulation. I hired a QEP. Mm -hmm. uh, QEP did an environment management plan. Mm -hmm. And under that environment management plan, said, Yeah, please put in a sheet pile wall. It's all signed off and stamped by a biologist. Sent it to the province. Now, a professional at the province decides, No, that's not going to work. Under wrapper, we want riprap. And so now you have one professional at the province, not ministry, fighting a professional who I paid for to say, Okay. And so, uh, 
this wrapper law is ridiculous and it has to go away. I did have a call from you on Wednesday today, actually. So I'll get through that process. So instead of going through wrapper and a provincial issue, I've decided to apply for a section 35, which is through the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. In the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, they allow for why well, they allow for compensation. So for example, for removing that building, um, they would allow me in the plan that I have that we've all approved. I have in two feet of that parent area, I had garbage can set. Right. Well, the province came back and said, no, you can't, you can't have them in there. It's in the it's in two feet of the 15 meters. And I said, well, what about the district of Sycamus who's gonna put a pathway right through it? Oh, that's okay. So so this wrapper regulation is 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 so bad that it's not even funny. I mean, I'll send you guys some stuff on what's happening with Celesta on all the fires and the houses that burned down. Because of wrapper, the CSRD is not providing any of those people with building permits. It's it's totally wrong. And so, you know, that's gonna get fixed in its own self. But under this, if I get support from the district of Sigmus and through my section 35 group then those regulations supersede the raffle regulations and the provincial, that, that ministry is just a mess. I don't even know what's going on in there right now. And so then we can just go with the DFOs, rules and regulations, and everything will move forward. I can be much quicker. Okay, thank you, that helps. Yeah, it gives me a good update because we've obviously been working on your development. We've yeah. approved it, went through PDC, came to council, and you're, you're still where you're Mm -hmm. are <laughs> unfortunately councillors anyone else have any more discussion okay all in favor of the support letter and that's carried thanks do you have something you want to give us is there do you have information in that stack that you well, want to yes, uh, information with me, but just really quick i did have we did have a speech yesterday um uh, and uh the mayor and, and councillor bushel attended uh, because we did meet with the ministry two weeks ago. And just a quick update on forged releases. Uh, we finally got told at that meeting that until the NOI and splat scene is dealt with, they will not be issuing any forged releases, which is totally against the law. And it's it's not uh, an option that we even have. So uh, our SNEES group met and we are gonna hire a lawyer and now we will go for the process in order to uh, releases um, because they do have a duty as a ministry to keep processing uh, regardless of what the NY is or any dealings with First Nations. So that's, that's our next step. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. Ministry of Public Safety and Solicitor General, uh, Solicitor General response, Bill 34. So we wrote a letter regarding um, Illicit drugs in Bill 34, not um, taking back the, the legislation. But um, so they just, this is just an update. We wrote a letter, they wrote a letter back thanking us. The end. So I guess we still keep fighting, right? Okay. Um, and then there's correspondence for information. Does anyone, thanks, Todd. Does anyone want to go? Uh, does anyone want to address anything mm -hmm. in the correspondence? Councillor Rich. Yeah, through the chair. I just wanted to um, give a shout out to Interior Health for the in introduction of the Virtual Addiction Medicine Referral Service. Uh, I don't know if everybody's read this, and again, just to get it on. But this makes it so if someone decides they need help, they make a call within 24 hours, they're going to get help. They don't have to then try to make a doctor's appointment and stuff like that. So the people that are ready for help, it, it gets them in the system. We absolutely need more beds. We need a different um, approach to this, but this is huge. And um, I appreciate that this is coming out. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bushel. Yes, yeah, through the chair, there's just a couple uh, uh, requests in there for the light up of the roundabout. So I don't know if Daryl was able to review them. And, uh, and what else do we have? Uh, Declaring June seventeenth uh, as Hope Air Day. I'm not sure if everybody knows about Hope Air, and uh, they're a good organization that um, uh, uh, transports um, 
children and and whoever uh, to medical um, you know, that need medical assistance in, in big centers. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, they're looking for support. Um, and I guess that uh, that's about it. Okay. Anyone else? Oh. Okay. Let's move on. Does anyone have any comments on the committee and regional district reports? No. Okay. Um, public input. <laughs> anyone in the gallery that would like to speak to uh, have any questions? I'll just say real quick. So two markets left and Fungi Fest in two weeks. Um, almost all my long walks are separate. And nice. we the uh, showcase entry to Communities of Bloom. You'll hear back in October, I guess, about that. So I'm almost done. <laughs> nice, Deb. <laughs> you worked hard this. <laughs> you worked really hard this year. Thank you for all that you do. Anyone online? Any hands up? All right, we are going to move in camera. So that's our late item. 630, you're going to move in camera under section 91. Oh, do I need to? 91C and E of the community charter to discuss labor. 